guys, it's Tab from Shine Bright Design and today I am bringing you my colouring book supplies. So these are my must-have colouring book uh, supplies and these are things that I feel like I need every time I start a colouring book project. So it, I'm not saying that you guys should purchase these but if you like what you see, why not give it a try? If you have any questions about what I have or any questions about the supplies that I have, please comment below and don't hesitate to ask. Alright, so the first thing that I love and think that everyone who is really serious about colouring should get is the Derwent Superpoint Handheld um, Sharpener. And this is my favourite sharpener so far. I've used it on different types of brands of pencils, low grade, high grade, medium, whatever. But I can assure you that this uh, sharpener will always sharpen to a very sharp point. And it's so easy to use and it's so easy to clean. It has a pull out drawer with the, um, with the pencil sharpenings. You can also take out the back by twisting it and pulling it out and cleaning the um, the drill the I don't know what it's called but it's like a drill bit or whatever the sharpening blade if you is that what you call it. Um, when I purchased this, there was a mount to have it attached to the table, but I always like to have it loose around my desk so I don't use it. Um, when you insert a pencil, if I want to, if I can demonstrate for you right now. You have to press this side button right here. So you press it, you pull it out, you insert your pencil and you release. And then you twist your handheld and it will just eat the pencil up. So of course the further you let it, the further you pull the system out, the sharper the point will be. But just remember um, that if even though you're going to sharpen your pencil to a sharp point, it really depends on the type of um, pencil pencil core that you have. Some soft core pencils will break easily when they're sharpened to a point and more harder pencils won't. So you really need to be careful on how much you sharpen your pencil and be careful not to waste too much product when you sharpen it away. Now, another thing that you can have in your kit that I don't have with me at the moment, but I will explain to you, is a, a Stanley knife or a blade. Now, if you don't want to use a sharpener because you're scared of wasting product, you can always use a blade to sharpen the product as it blunts. And this will save you a lot of money. And it will also sharpen that pencil to the point that you need for finer details. So that is a really good thing as well. If you don't have a blade, you can also use um, this thing. I don't know what it's called, but if, if I find out, I will place the item name in the description box below. All products mentioned in this video will be um, will be placed in the description box below for your um, viewing. So if you don't have a blade and um, you want to sharpen your pencil, you can use this little tool, or do, I would call it a tool. And basically you just sand down the product till it gets to a sharp point. So I use this for sharpening my pencils as well as cleaning my paper stumps. So with that moving on, um, I always like to have stumps in my kit and stumps are used for blending. So you can use stumps just as they are or you can use them with a solvent. So I have a couple of stumps here. One is a tortillion and the other is just a normal paper stump. Um, they both work very similar um, in terms of blending the the pencil pigment on the page out and um, so that you would basically blend the pigment out and fill it into the empty grains of the paper. 
So that's another thing I like to have in my kit. Paper stumps are great for blending, and um, it just saves from it just saves you from smudging with your finger because the paper stump would be more clean as your finger. So, moving on. Oh, and the great thing about this is you can just rip off a new page every time you run out. So, I always like to have in my pencil kit um, a colorless blender. Now, this is another blending um, product as well. If you want me to actually talk more about blending products and how to use them in a separate video, please comment and like below because it's something that I feel like a lot of um, colorists would like to know about because there's not much information about uh, how to use coloring tools such as colorless blenders, um, odorless solvents and whatnot. So I like to use a colorless blender and what it does is it blends pigment together to um, fill into those gaps and the main reason is basically a colorless pigment and it, you basically are burnishing the pigment on the paper. Generally, when you start using a colorless, um, colorless pencil on top of any pencil pigment and you try and lay color on top, it will give a floating effect and just sit on top of the existing pigment that you've placed down. So this is my understanding of my art supplies that I have obtained over the past um, past few years doing colouring and being um, working in design and art. This is the findings that I have experienced. It's not solid. I wouldn't say don't call me the expert on it because I don't have formal training in fine arts. I have a training in... Um, in creative arts and design and I've studied art and I've done numerous courses but I wouldn't say I am an experienced professional so this is just my opinion another thing that I love and use in my colorings is the Derwent electric eraser now this was also accompanied by the refills as well and I might have mentioned in one of my other videos but um, the way to replace or refill these things are quite confusing if you don't know what you're looking for. So when I purchased this, I had no idea how to refill this thing. And you basically pinch at the top, right here, so you release the tension, and then you pull. And then what you'll notice is that the casing that holds the eraser is actually quite, is actually not tight against it. There is no tension holding it because this was the tension that was um, holding the eraser in this metal bit. So basically you put in your new eraser uh, refill, you press it so that it gives a bit of tension and then you push it back into the, to the eraser and release and there you go. So I love this eraser because it helps me get to smaller areas and um, allows me to work with more detail. As well as having a smaller one, it's always handy to have a larger one as well. Now there are a few erasers that I have in my kit that I don't have with me today, but I might show you if you give me a second. So other than having this electric um this electric eraser. I also like to have kneadable erasers as well as all as also a normal hard eraser and there is another eraser that you might um, like to get your hands on as well that I'll mention in my description box below but it's basically a harder eraser and um, it's more hard, it's more stiff than the one that you would normally get for school supplies. So that is another eraser that you can use as well. Now erasers are great for removing that pigment so that you can lift the colour and sometimes that can be used in products, um, in colourings. Another thing that I love having in my colouring is fine liners. Now there are some points in your colouring that you might not want to use a black coloured pencil so you might use either a black texture or black fine liner. Now I like to use fine liners for things such as details and hair, 
eyelashes and finer hair strokes. So that's one of the things that I like having as well. Another thing that you can have is a small black gel pen and that, uh, sorry, a small white gel pen which is exactly the same type as uh, a black eyeliner only that it's white. So that is really great to use as well for highlight. Now what I also love to use is Posca pens. Now Posca pens for me are are a must because they give me the ability to give shadow and highlight whenever I feel. And the great thing about Posca pens is that they're a um, they're basically a paint marker or almost similar to a chalk marker. The great thing about these Posca pens is when you place them on top of your colouring for example, you can actually scratch it back off. So if you change your mind, it's not going to ruin your existing artwork. So that's one reason why I love working with Posca pens as a highlight because if I change my mind, I can always remove the Posca marker. So what I loved about these is that they come in different nib sizes as well and they have a wide range of colors so look into Posca pens because they're really great for artworks and colorings and lastly I'd like to mention some uh, odorless solvents odorless solvents are great uh, used for blending your color your coloring pigments I've used it on a range of my works and you, you might have seen it on YouTube already. I would say odorless uh, solvents or mineral spirits are a very, are a very advanced type of blending, um, blending solution or blending, um, blending technique. And if you guys want me to discuss blending techniques about solutions, pencils, uh, baby oil and, and Vaseline and the many ways that you can apply them to your colorings, please comment below because I really think it would be a great video for you guys to watch and um, just get some, get some knowledge about blending and solvents and how you can use them in your artwork. So guys, that is my basics uh, coloring supplies. Now let's go to the, um, how do I say, the grand finale. That is my two go-to coloring pencil sets. One is the Prismacolor Premier 150 box set. And this is your probably most popular box set around that a lot of colorists are using. The thing about this set is that it is a soft core pencil, which means that as, as well as it's great for blending, the one thing about this that I hate, not hate, but it's a pet peeve, these things shatter really easily and they break very easily as well. So the last thing you want to do is drop them. And if you sharpen them to a very sharp point, even the slightest pressure will break the lead. So for, for, for these pencils, it's not really... There's really no reason why you should sharpen it to a really sharp point because it may f it may break anyway because it's that fragile. But other than that, Prismacolor pencils are beautiful pencils. They're very affordable. Um, they're readily available within Australia and overseas. You can get them on Amazon and you get them in most art stores who will supply it. Um, the good thing about well, the bad thing about these is that because they're so fragile, you really need to go and inspect the pencil before you buy them. I would be wary about buying these online or having them delivered to you because of the possibility of having the product damaged or cracked or fractured um, in the delivery process. So a good thing is to buy it from a supplier or a seller and actually inspecting it when you purchase it. Um, these pencils are beautiful. Every pencil set that you will purchase um, will, be, will differ from each other. They will have different uh, color variations and each set, whatever brand you may uh, purchase, will have a different, will have different unique colors in them. So, so yeah, I, that's why I have so many pencil sets because every pencil set is different. Every brand has its own unique color range. Um, I do love Prismacolor pencils in certain colouring books and for me Prismacolors are probably, you can't go wrong with them, 
but the thing that I hate about them is they are unreliable. And the one thing that I'm scared of is purchasing my next set when these run really low because I know I'm scared of things fracture, fracturing during delivery, but I do love them. What I wish Prismacolor had was a wooden box set. I love wooden box sets. They're just so sexy. I don't know why. Just the touch and feel of the product within the wood is just amazing. It just gives it that really classy feel. So, unfortunately for Prismacolor, they don't have a wooden box set, but this box is probably the grandest thing that you'll see the Prismacolors sitting in. And it's a nice cardboard box. Uh, it does get a bit bummed up a little and scratched, but you know, that's the wear and tear of these things. And the great things about Prismacolor is that you can buy the pencils individually, uh, individually as well. Um, but yeah, you can't go wrong with Prismacolors if you're going to purchase it. But if you're going to purchase it, I do recommend buying it in person or at an art store. Now, my favorite, no, yeah, I would say this is my favorite because I love Faber Castell. I have a 120 Faber Castell wooden box set. This box set has a lock system and the wooden box set is very sturdy. It's very um it's very beautiful. It's got really nice craftsmanship and it has a elevated um I would say it's tiered packaging, so when you open it, there's two levels. You can't see it here close up, but after I speak about it, I'll probably show you a video of it um, closer. The great things about Faber-Castell is that they are a oil-based pencil, and the Prismacolors are a wax-based pencil. Because the Prismacolors are a wax-based pencil, they pull and push more when they're placed next to each other. For example, if you placed down black pigment and ran white pigment on top, you would it would blend so it would blend so easily like oil paint almost. Um, it's just a very easily blendable product. It can be a good and bad thing if you try for you know, it can be a good but good and bad thing. Uh, depends on how you work and what your technique is and what your outcome or goal is for your colouring artwork. Now the good thing about Faber-Castell is that they're so reliable, they are a sturdy pencil. If you bought these babies online, you wouldn't be scared of products being damaged, you wouldn't be scared of products being fractured because these are crafted so well and the product is impeccable. I love, I love Faber-Castell, I think that they are so reliable and you, they are so trustworthy. Faber-Castell has been around for years, since 1761, and they're German, or Swiss, they're German. And because that they have been around so long, and still to this day, their products are impeccable. You know that this brand is top notch. So if you're looking at high quality and great craftsmanship, Faber-Castell is somewhere where you can't go wrong. If, you, if cost is nothing, Faber-Castell is amazing to invest in. There are also other um, colouring pencil brands that I love and want to purchase, but I have to save and it will be on my next wish list. So when I get those pencils, I will also discuss them and give a feedback and review on them as well. But Faber Castell is a very beautiful is a very beautiful set. It's not too soft and it's not too hard. It's I would say it's just right. Um, and the great thing about these is that it does have unique colors as well that doesn't compare to any other brand. That's the good thing about when you're buying into brands. Each set of brand that you purchase into has its own unique color range. So I do love Faber-Castell. It is high craftsmanship and it is trustworthy. It is not my go-to because I feel like 
Faber-Castell pencils work well on certain types of paper and the Prismacolors work better on other types of paper as well. But you, but I reckon Faber-Castell can work on any type of paper and still look good. I've tried out on most of my colouring books and it still does the, a good job. But if I had to choose one, definitely would choose Faber-Castell because it's trustworthy, it's durable, and there's no fear of damage during the shipping or delivery. Prismacolor is great for the cost, but you have to be weary about the chances of it being damaged and um, coming to you fractured because these are soft core pencils, they can break. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed my what's in my coloring book kit. And in my next video, I'll probably talk about what's in my watercoloring book kit, a uh, supplies tool that I use for watercolors. And I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have any questions, please comment below. And if you like, like and subscribe as always. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. So I just wanted to show everyone what the Prismacolor Premier 150 box set looks like. It's basically a cardboard box, um, it's pretty sturdy and what's cool about it is that it has a tear. So it, if you see here on this side, you will see that it kind of elevates the pencil set. So that's a really cool feature. Um, the trays as you can see are plastic nothing special um, the trays hold the pencils but the trays are nothing like the Caran d'Ache trays which are made out of foam these ones uh, the pencils still rattle around within the plastic trays um, my pencils aren't in order they're in rough order but they are not in the order they come when packaged as you can see, my black is so tiny. Anyway, so that's the Prismacolor set. Just let me close it. There's a bit of information on the lid, as you can see, and it flips, and it has a magnetic closure, a magnetic closure at the front here. So that's the Prismacolor Premier 150 box set. Now moving on, we have the Faber Castell wooden box set, 120 set. Now what I like about this is that it has some extra storage in the back here for extra pencils if you have it. If you want to throw in some sharpeners or erasers in the back, you can throw it here as well. Um, again, the trays for Faber-Castell are plastic, but the good thing about Faber-Castell, if you can see, I don't know if I can show you, there's a bit of foam underneath as well, so that um, when you close it, it doesn't damage these pencils, so the foam underneath the lid here is a protection. There is also this hinge here, so it is that tiered opening, which is really great and really handy um, in terms of space and, and space usage. So with the other box sets, um, even the Faber-Castell um, the Faber Castell tin or the tray, um, you'd have to take those trays out of the box set and it takes a lot of table space. So what's really great about this box set is that it doesn't take up that much room, um, it doesn't take up that much space of your table either and that's what I really like about it. Another great feature of the Faber Castell wooden box set is that it has these lock closures which just twist to lock and let me just do the other one and what's also great is that there is a handle um, this is metal and the handles are just plastic the locks here are just plastic nothing special but it's a really great box set it's um, fabulous packaging and the wood finish is amazing so I really like the Faber-Castell box set. I love anything in wood, um, as you guys know if you've been following me for a while. So those are the two pencil sets.
that I 